So before this video begins, I would like to address a question that I have seen an unfathomable amount of times over the past couple weeks. My comments have been getting blown up with this, so I figured that I should respond to this heavily pondered question. So here it is. Why am I a fish? So first of all, hi, welcome to the channel, because if you're asking this, you're obviously new here, which I feel actually applies to most of you since I had less than 2,000 subs at the beginning of April. But to fully answer that question, I would like to direct you to the playlist I'm linking at the top of the screen now. It's a series of videos called The History of the Earth, and I've been working on it for the past couple of months now. So far, we've gone from the Earth's fiery beginnings all the way to the end of the Silurian period. And every time I make a new video going forward in time, I gain a new form. So hopefully someday I'll get back to being human again. And with any luck, we won't pick up any more stowaways. And if you came in from one of my other videos, I can see why my choice of avatar might confuse you. But anyway, with that bit of clarification out of the way, let's get back to the main video. How's it going, everybody? So another comment I've been getting a lot has been a question posed to one specific video. That being the very first one I ever released on the channel where I talked about how crocodiles survived the extinction at the end of the Cretaceous and ended the reign of non-avian dinosaurs. This has led to many people asking the question of how crocodiles managed to survive through the Cenozoic because the Cenozoic has had a drastically less consistent climate than the Mesozoic that preceded it. Now, we'll get into what the different climates were like during specific periods as we get into those times in the History of the Earth series. But most people associate the Age of Mammals with the extreme swings in glaciation known as the Ice Age. As we discussed in the first video, their cold-blooded metabolism probably was one of the factors that led to them outlasting the dinosaurs. Since crocodiles didn't have nearly as high of a caloric requirement as dinosaurs, which are now believed to have been at least mostly warm-blooded, especially in the more active groups like the carnivorous theropods. But the catch-22 to being exothermic is that instead of warming your body by burning calories from food, that energy has to come directly from the heat of the sun. So during a time when the world was getting drastically cooler, obviously this could pose a problem. A problem that I thought could use a little bit of an explanation. Especially since the perfect place to find clues to this answer is my own backyard. When you think of an ice age, the popular image that most people have is a frozen, ice-covered landscape that can barely support even the hardiest of life. And for a large portion of the Northern Hemisphere, that was an accurate image. During the height of the last glacial maximum around 18,000 years ago, around one-tenth of the planet was covered in glaciers, and this comes out to around 30% of the land. That being said, that still leaves 70% of the land not covered by ice. I guess it's a widely believed misconception that Ice Age means ice everywhere. I don't know, I'm just going by the comments. And that definitely was not true. But one thing that Ice Ages do change is that it tends to make a lot more of the world much more dry. It's a pretty simple concept. There's just as much water on Earth now as there was back in the Pleistocene. However, if more of that water is locked in glaciers at the poles, there's less water in liquid form to go around. And this had an effect all over the planet. Lower sea levels meant that the coastlines were noticeably different than what we know today. And the ecosystems across many different regions of the world were very different as well. For example, the Amazon is thought of as the peak of terrestrial biodiversity today. But the biggest tropical rainforest in the world is actually only around 10,000 years old. During the Ice Age, the entire region was a subtropical grassland. And this is just one example. The Indonesian islands were so different because of sea levels that Sumatra and Borneo were still connected to Thailand. This allowed humans to island hop across the shorter distances by boat to eventually arrive at the combined land masses of New Guinea, Australia, and Tasmania, a continent that archaeologists call Sahul. That's a land that I hope to cover in a lot more detail someday, but for the purposes of this video, just know how drastically different this land was during the Pleistocene. And again, no ice to be found here. Early on in the Pleistocene, Sahul started out as mostly covered in woodlands, and as the Ice Age went on, the continent dried to large sections of desert, even more so than Australia is known for today. So getting back to the crocodiles and how they survived this time. The easy answer is that 
crocodiles and alligators still had places to live during the Ice Age. The entire world wasn't frozen, and even though the world was far drier on average than today, there was still wetland environments that were perfect for them. One of the best examples of this come from one of the most plentiful examples of Pleistocene fossils outside of Rancho La Brea. During that time, the peninsula of Florida was an oasis from the inhospitable conditions further north. Because of the lower sea levels, the landmass was around three times the size that it is today. And all this perfect land led to an abundance of large animals that would even surpass the African Serengeti. There were horses, camels, bison, several species of ground sloths, giant beavers, glyptodons, and three different kinds of elephants. And that was just the herbivores. There was a staggering variety of big cats, both conical toothed cats like lions as well as saber toothed cats like Smilodon. And in addition to the animals that we think of as dedicated Ice Age animals, most of the creatures that we know today were here as well. Even some that exist today but you wouldn't think of as Floridian animals. And there's a lot of fossil evidence to suggest that alligators and crocodiles were here as well. They're mostly the same as the North American species that we have today, though they might have been somewhat larger on average. But nothing insane like what we've seen in other times in the past. Because of the warm temperatures that persisted through the glacial period, the lack of human interference, and the bounty of large animals to feed on, the Sunshine State was the perfect home for them even if a huge portion of the rest of the world was less than ideal. So as far as extinction causing events go, it's actually pretty easy to see how crocodiles were able to survive the Ice Age. Simply by living in places where the climate was not as drastically impacted, they were able to live on through a time in Earth's history that would normally be thought of as pretty devastating to cold-blooded reptiles. I used Florida as an example because it's a place that I'm the most familiar with the fossil history of. But in reality, there were places on every continent, with the exceptions of Antarctica and possibly Europe, that would have been perfect places for some type of crocodile to survive over the past two million years. So it's really not too surprising that they were able to pull through. But this gave me the perfect opportunity to make kind of an introductory video to the subject of Pleistocene Florida, a time and place very near and dear to my heart. I grew up in this state, and after living here for so many years, I felt like I kind of got jaded to its beauty. But after moving back after four years away, I feel like I noticed things more. Things like the gopher tortoises, sandhill cranes, and yes, even the alligators. These and so many other animals I used to just take for granted as just part of the background. But in the future, I would love to dedicate a series to Florida's wildlife, both living and extinct. Kind of taking a page from Henry the Paleo Guy on this one. He's got his New Zealand Bird of the Week. Why can't I? It's a bit of a passion project for me, so if that's something that you would like to see, let me know in the comments. Or any other paleo videos, any other paleo catalogs, or other question videos, because those are always fun. But anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like, and subscribe to Paleo Analysis if you're interested in learning more about Earth's past. Have a good one, everybody.